As our boat entered the broad mouth of the Mekong River, we were on deck, eager for our first glimpse of the little town, Nam Pen, where we were to land and outfit our expedition for Angkor. Passing through the rich Delta Flats, we felt the hypnotic power of this tropical land. There was something menacing and magnetic in the blue-black jungle crouching on the river banks. The enthusiasm which had filled us since leaving France was offset for an instant by this unknown, mysterious country. Almost immediately, this feeling was relieved by the novel sights around us, floating villages built on bamboo rafts that rise and fall with the tides and floods. A strange sight indeed, an indolent way to live. The water provides food and also solves the problem of sanitation. Many natives are born, reared, and spend their entire lives in these floating villages without ever setting foot on land. Approaching the harbor of Phnom Penh, capital city of Cambodia, we saw crowds of natives in holiday attire gathered for the annual boat races, a picturesque and colorful scene. We were fortunate to arrive on such a momentous occasion. The canoes are 60 feet long and have 40 men to a crew. The coxswain sits in front because the men face front. He beats the stroke for all the world like the captain of an ancient slave gang. was last year's champion and now wins again. Its crew stand up to the sweeps like gondoliers. The long barbaric canoes fit perfectly into this tropical setting. We hurried up the main street of Phnom Penh and seemed a curiosity to the children. Primitive ox carts and native cabs drawn by ponies were the only methods of transportation. Teeming markets displaying cooked food flanked the streets in a typically oriental manner. Visiting the king's palace gardens, our interest was arrested by carvings of seven-headed cobras on each side of the principal pagoda stairway representing the goddess Naga. Legend has it that Naga herself was a cobra, and when each king took a new bride, Naga assumed the shape of a human virgin, displacing the bride, spending the wedding night with the king, and next morning reassuming her character of cobra. Being guests of the king, we were permitted to see the royal Cambodian dancers. We noticed on the left an outstanding figure wearing a monkey mask, representing the Prince of the Apes. The dance portrays princesses dancing for him, and all of the action centers around the figure wearing the monkey mask. The extraordinary motif astounded us. The unbelievable suggestion of apes wielding power over human beings was unheard of outside of this part of the world and dates back to ancient times. Monkeys are sacred throughout Cambodia. They swarm everywhere, never tied or caged, never killed by man, even given houses of their own, and living like gluttons while poor peasants go hungry. Centuries of protection have bred a race of apes who are fearless of mankind. The royal elephants used only on stage. Every day at two o'clock, they make their way to the river where they're met by keepers who give them a bath, not only to cool them off, but to soften their hides. 
and keep their great hoop pads clean and pliable. Water affords them great relief in this hot tropical country, which is only a few degrees removed from the equator. later, in a steaming jungle fog, we loaded our supplies into ox carts and started for the boat landing. When the natives learned our destination was Angkor, they refused to rent us their boats, or sampans as they call them. They said that white men who went to Angkor never came back, and they didn't want to lose their boats. They insisted the curse of the high gods had been on the jungles for centuries. This was our first intimation of the obstacles and hazards ahead of us. In the end, we were compelled to buy their boats outright, and with much difficulty and bribery, we finally succeeded in getting together enough men to handle them. As we pulled out into the stream, starting on our long journey, our headman's wife and baby were on the shore to bid him bon voyage. We noticed he had brought stowaway friends with him for whose services we hadn't bargained. Our number one boy was a likable chap, but strange and mysterious they all are. Angkor is 300 miles inland, and at the time of our expedition, rivers were the only highways to Angkor. A thousand years ago, this land was greater than Egypt at its prime. When William the Conqueror swooped down on England, Charlemagne fought the Gauls, Cambodia led the world in culture. 